So as per my sketches, I've got these sections that are adhering to design A. I have also design B, which is a pop-up. So I want to create a button so that once you click on the button, it goes over to the About screen. The About screen is going to be where I show various About information, such as about the college, and as per the design, that's also where we're going to get the map. So, um, I'm going to borrow this button to be that About button, and I'm going to put it into the bottom left of my grid. <coughs> the bottom left of my grid. So, we'll back up to the Home section, and let's see. I've got, on line 57, I've got that, uh, that tag, that t pair of tags for the button. I'm going to select it, and this is something useful in Notepad. You can drag and drop code. I need it to cut and paste to move it from, a, from way line 100 down to 200. Cut and paste. But if I want to move something easily, like right here, I want to move that button literally into the bottom left. I can select it and just drag it make a selection of your code and click the selection and drag it to where you want it and it moves it there. So look at this, I've selected it, put my mouse on it, and then I drag it to the bottom left and it moves it to the bottom left. So you can move, you can drag and drop code. It needs a little bit of cleanup there and I no longer need it to say bottom left anymore. Actually I no longer need it to say the top left, top right, bottom anymore here. So on my home grid, take out the top left, take out all the placeholder text there. And on the bottom left, which is UI block A of the second row, I'm going to move the button to it. So nothing more bottom right, nothing more top right, top left. <coughs> on the bottom left, I've moved the button. The button that was right below welcome, I've moved it into the bottom left of the grid. And um, instead of it saying button, change that to say about. This is an About button. And the way it should look is like this. Notice it's not stretching all the way across side to side of the screen, because now it's in a container that constrains it. The grid, UI grid A, is a two-column grid. UI grid B is a three-column grid. Grid B, C is three columns, and so forth. And then rows, uh, this is one row here. There's nothing that indicates that it's a row, but this and this are the elements of the first row. Because I've got only two columns, column A, column B. Then a whole new row, column A, column B. So again, the grids are pretty weird in, in jQuery Mobile. You, you set A, B, C, D, whatever, to give you the columns. And then to make rows, you add blocks. And a block A is for the first column, B, second column, third column. And because now we've done that, it made an equal amount on the left and the right, and therefore this button doesn't stretch out all the way anymore. That's my About button. That About button, instead of href page 1, I wanted to point to my about screen, so change line 67, page 1, to pound about. I don't have an about screen yet, so it won't go anywhere. But I'm building it up so that this about button goes to the about screen. And I want to add an icon. After the href, I'll add data-icon, and I've got an icon called info, which is a little info icon, little, little i. So now it's a button, it points to that page that we will create in a moment, that section, and then uh, icon, and it's about. <coughs> the result of that is like this, little info. It says the word about. I can do one more thing, actually. I don't really need the word about. I just want the icon. So I can add another attribute here. 
another jQuery mobile attribute. We've already got data role and data icon. We can do one more thing. After data icon, we will add data dash icon POS, that's position. We can position the icon equals. We can put the icon on the left, which is the default. We can put it on the right. We can put it on the top. We can put it at the bottom. So if you change this data icon pos, it moves the icon to the position of the right. Without me, without me saying anything, it's to the left. If I say something, I can put it to the top, to the right, wherever. And I also have another attribute. I can say, instead of right, left, whatever, I can say, no text. And what that does is it only keeps the icon and shows no text. The result is an icon that is only, a button that is only an icon. So icon position, the, the position of the icon, no text. And therefore, it just keeps the icon, not the text. Looks like that. Without that attribute, it's got text. With icon pass, no text, there's no text. Yeah, if you hover over it, it'll still tell you that it's about. So this button, when I click it, I want a pop-up to appear. A pop-up can be done in a couple different ways, and we will do it the way we know so far, which is to use a section. But then we add an extra attribute that makes it behave like a pop-up. So let's go to the very end of the document. We've got section, and that's the end of our computer screen. And we have a comment where our computer section starts, but as you scroll and scroll and scroll and you see end of section, what's the end of that section? A good idea is to also comment where you, what has ended there. So on my line 238, that's the end of my computer section. I'm going to add a comment there. End computer section. Because I can see where it starts. I've marked it. Unless I follow the little red line, I won't know where it ends. And if I'm already at the end of a section, I'm not going to backtrack to follow that line to find out where it starts. I'll just add a comment that tells me this is the end of my computer section, the end of my art section, home section, whatever. So after the end of my computer section, add a few enters and I'll create a brand new section. I will do this one manually just for the practice. We could copy and paste it, but just for the practice, because we're creating a very basic new section with a little pop-up. It doesn't need the nav. It doesn't need the footer. Remember our design B? It's just a simple pop-up with a little strip at the top. So we'll create a new section, data role. Um, Data role is a page again, and it also needs a unique ID, which is about. That little icon is trying to find a section called about. There's the section. And in the section, we're going to need a header, data role header. Our syntax is that then we've got an h1 there, because it's the first heading of that section, and we'll say about. That's what's going to be visible to people in the heading one. And so we've got a header, we've got a footer, but sandwiched in between we've got what? Article. With a data role of content. So 
So let's just type that up there, let you catch up for a moment, save it and run it. You should be able to click the button and this new section appears. It doesn't look like a pop-up yet, we're almost there. But we've made a new section that is our about screen. We'll make it behave like a pop-up in a moment, because that's nothing new. We've already done that a few times. The new part I'll show you in just a moment to make sure this is all typed in and that it works. And then we'll, and then we'll dialogue. <coughs> We'll upgrade it to a dialog pop-up box. So basically, every time you want to show a new content, a new, a new screen full of content, it's a section, usually. There's at least one that isn't going to be a section. When we get to the panel, it's not really a whole section of content. It's like a side section. That has its own HTML tag that we haven't gotten to yet. But this is another section of content, the About screen. If I save it and run it, my info button, my about button, if I click it, I get an about screen. Great. No back button. But we're going to turn this into a pop-up screen and all it needs is this section has a data role of page and after the data role of page, because remember I said I always want the ID or the class to be the last attribute simply so that I can find it quickly. So I've got a data role, and I'm also going to add a data-dialog equals true. Make it behave like a dialog box. And notice that's the spelling of dialog, not the other spelling of dialog. Dialog. So now, add that, and suddenly we've got a cool pop-up with a built-in close button. So I click on the info button, the about button, it pops up. Oop, what am I missing? Data dialog. What's that? There's no close button. No, 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 it's not there yet, but it's supposed to be. Did I miss it? What am I missing here? Section data roll page data dialog true. Did it work for anyone? It's supposed to look like a pop-up box. Did it work for anyone? According to my notes, that's correct. Data role page and data dialog true. There's a couple of ways to do it, but this is the way that works so to my notes. When you uh, hover the uh, mouse over the info missing item, you see it um, pop up. Yeah, but that's only, you're talking about this, right? That's only that's only about. What, it, what we mean is that when we click on it, it's actually going to show us a screen here of stuff because that's what I've got. 
because what I've got in the example up here, if you click on that, it's supposed to pop open like this. So something is not quite. What's that? Hmm. No, mine is still not popping up. My example site, that's the code I've got. That's my example site that works. Data roll page, data dialog true. Oh, the ID must be pop up basic. Yeah. Or data rail equals pop up. Uh, <laughs> well, whenever anything goes wrong, you know the old saying RTFM? Read the funky manual, <laughs> jquerymobile.com. Let me take a quick little detour. Demos. That's true. That's exactly true. We're using jQuery 1.3.5, and I'm trying to do it 1.4.5. We should probably change that. <laughs> we should. <coughs> So good point. I'm I'm teaching the modern way, but we've got the old code. So what we've got here, what we've got here is correct, and it doesn't quite behave how I want yet. But once we upgrade our code to jQuery 1.4.5, it'll work. So we're gonna leave it how I've got it here. Data roll page, data dialog true. That's gonna make a pop up once we upgrade our jQuery mobile version in a little while. Um, so we've got a brand new screen for about content. In the about is where I want to show the map. So I'm going to move the map over to the about screen. The drag and drop won't quite work there because it's you're going to drag from very high up to very down below. So I'm going to back up to my home screen where I've got my link to my map, which is line 75. It's just a simple image that is dynamically pulling a picture when needed. So I'm going to copy that. Make sure you copy both lines. Image starts there, and then it closes here with its width and its height. Make sure you get that too. Cutting it. Cutting it, exactly. We're going to cut it, and we're going to move it down. We're going to paste it down inside of the About screen. So I've just put some placeholder text there, but I will actually put my image. Now my home page is a little barren, but that'll look better in a moment. And then I click the info button, and again, it'll be a pop-up eventually, and I'm going to have an icon there of, of a map and other stuff. And right now it's a dead end. I have a back button in my browser, but I need a back button. I don't want, <coughs> back, I don't want the, to rely on the back button of the browser when it's an app. I want navigation, and there'll be a built-in close button once we get jQuery 145. jQuery mobile 145. So I'm going to give you a little in-class task. Based on everything we've done so far, this should make sense. We've created all of these sections, this pop-up that will be eventually a pop-up, and on computer, we've got one, two, three, four links that don't go anywhere. Those are going to need to be screens of content as well. Based on the example project, the idea is now you need to create a screen for Windows, for Mac, for Linux 101 and 102. 
perhaps based on what we've already written, and massaged a little bit. I'm going to give you maybe five minutes on your own, create these pages, and then in five minutes I'll go on if you, if you don't get it, but you try, save your, save your work at this point, and you try to create brand new sections for each of these. Remember, they're going to need a section based on my drawing. I've got, this is design C. This is only going to need, design C basically looks like this, like that. A full screen with a header and no footer. And you're going to need to be mindful that once you click on the Windows 101, it goes to something that's called, I don't know, win, Windows or something? Hashtag Windows or something. So you, you figure that out for a moment at about 9.01. I'll do it. You try based on what we've done, and you should be able to with everything we've learned so far. And the big secret is, the big secret is copy and paste your about screen. And then you might get it. Try it for a moment. The nuances are going to be your IDs and your hrefs. Try to figure that out for a moment. Okay, so hopefully you got it. Let me break it down what you needed to do. Again, I'll make my code available at the end of the day, but here's what I did. 
I took the about section, which is a pretty minimal section, the about section that we did together right now, because it's got section, header, and article. I copied all of that. I also added comments here to remind me that's the about start, end of about. I copied all that section. I pasted it. And I, all I had to do was change to a new ID. I'm calling it PC Windows. And then I wrote Windows up on the heading 1. Some dummy content. That same basic about screen, I pasted it again. And that's my new PC Mac screen. And I wrote Mac 101. Same little skeleton. Then I pasted it again. And I changed that section to ID PC Lin 1. Whatever you want. Linux 101. Whatever you want. PC Lin 1. I took that little skeleton of a section and I pasted it to the fourth one with a brand new ID. That's the big secret, the IDs. PC Lin 2. And then I wrote some content there. That was step one. I created the four sections by copying and pasting a basic skeleton. Then, Part two is I backed up to my computer screen where I've got my list view and I then had to make those buttons work. There was a button for Windows 101, a button for Windows 102 because they've got an href and they were pointing to page one, page one, page one, page one. So I made a brand new section with a brand new ID of pound PC Windows, pound PC Mac, pound PC Lin 1 and PC Lin 2. Now I've got the destination, and I've got the button to the destination, and when I run it, go to computer screen, click on Windows 101, I'm in Windows. Linux 101, I'm in Linux 101. I go to a section and I don't have a back button. We did a little attribute, if you recall, to give us a back button. When all we need to do is go to one page and come back, there's a jQuery mobile uh, construct uh, attribute that lets us come right back. We don't need a fancy nav bar like we've got on the other pages. We just need a simple back button. If you recall this one, the icing on the cake for that is on each section, Windows 101, Mac 101, etc., in the header, I need to add, do you remember this one? Data dash back, data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. Simple little back button. And I do need to add it to the, each of these sections because I'm just going to the section and coming back. So that back button, adding it to the header of each of the new sections. Data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. <clears throat> oh, good eye. Nope, I copied too much. Data dialog true, I guess, then false. See what happens when you try to cut corners and copy and paste? Copy your mistakes, yeah. So now that I've added that, I guess because I've got the dialogue, it conflicts. <coughs> it might. It might also be because the again we've got jQuery mobile one three whatever we need one four five. data add back btn, but I think because we've got jQuery mobile 145, it doesn't do it. So yes, I no, I don't need the data dialog. Copied a little too much. I don't need the data dialog. These are not going to be dialog boxes anymore. These are going to be regular screens. And actually not to the section, to the header. So in the, in the section, we don't want the dialog, and we want the back button to the header. So in 
the header data add back btn true. One of the first things that we'll do when we come back next time is upgrade that jQuery mobile. We're going to download the resource files and connect them to our project because uh, 131 has some deficiencies of, compared to 145. Missing a bunch of icons, the dialog box doesn't quite work, and this back button might not be behaving as advertised. So that's one of the first things we'll do next time. But for the moment, um, What's that? No, we can connect to it up in the cloud as well. But um, we're going to have a local version in case there's no internet access. We would go back to jQueryMobile.com and they would give us either a download or they would give us the CDN link. We'll do that next time. So at this point, I've got my various screens. I'm on my way. I'm going to keep adding my screens and content, polishing things up, upgrade to 145, and um, that'll be Thursday. Then that class will be over. Then on the following Tuesday, so a week from today, part two of the class begins, where we're going to take this. We still need to polish it and add content, but then we're going to shift gears over to talk about how to set up a app development environment to upgrade this to be an app, an iPhone app, a Windows phone app, an Android app, whatever. And that's got its own uh, things to do. And then we'll take this app and make it better and add databases and all of that, and then we're on our way. So I'm going to put my code in the network folder now. It's not showing up because, like I'm saying, we need, we need the 145. We'll do that next time. So I'm going to put my code in the network folder now, if you'd like a copy of how I've gone so far. And when we come back next time, we will go further.